Good morning. Today we're going to take a look at a very simple timer application. Uh, situation is that we want a signal to be generated once every 60 minutes and once it's generated the uh, employees have to perform a certain function and then hit an off switch. A very very simple application. To uh, get it developed we'll bring up a APB development screen uh, previously downloaded. If you want to go back and look at some of the other videos, it shows how to get this installed. We'll go over, we have an output that we want to be triggered on, and that output will tie that to a physical output point. We'll call that the loan. And we also have an input so that we can turn this thing off once it triggers, and we'll call that reset. So we have an input and an output. Now we need to be able to trigger the output on uh, whenever the alarm goes off. So we'll go over to our digital functions and we see that we have uh, something called a set reset relay. We'll install one of those in and basically we will want a relay when it goes off to turn on the alarm and we want to be able to reset our alarm with a reset button. The last piece is we need to trigger this thing on every 60 minutes. So we'll go in and we'll take a blinker block and uh, take a look at its properties very quickly. We see that we can have it uh, time uh, when it first powers up, it will time for a certain amount of time, and then it will go into a dwell time uh, for another amount of time. We we'll set this to one hour, or 60 minutes, and we'll have it generate a very quick one second pulse. We won't be using the reset, so we'll leave that as the low level, and we'll call this our timer. Save that. Oh. And one thing I forgot to do here is we want this timer running continuously, so we'll tie that to a high level continuous running mode. And we'll take that output and tie it to that. So if we go up to our simulate button now, we can see how this runs. We see that it generated the one pulse, the alarm is on, and it's now busily counting down. We could sit here for an hour and wait to see if it would reset. Uh, we will test a reset button. We notice that the latch gets reset and now it's waiting for the uh, the one hour. Well, during development we may want to reduce that time down a bit. So let's stop our simulator, go back in to the property block and we'll reduce this time down to something that we can sit around and wait for, maybe 10 seconds. Go back to our simulator. We see that it turns on and we can turn it off and this is busily counting down. Now one of the problems we see is that when we hit 10 seconds it generated the pulse but the reset input always takes precedence over the set and so the alarm never go off so the employee could leave the switch on and it would disable the alarm. Not exactly what we want. So let's go in and make sure that that can't happen. We'll delete that connection and we'll put in what's called a programmable one shot. That will just disable the uh, the ability to have the switch override it. We see that uh, again property block uh, we can generate a quick one second pulse out of this. That's enough to reset it. The actual reset input on the block isn't going to be used, so we set that to low. And now if we tie our input to that, tie the output up like that on our simulator. Now we see if we hit this, it resets the latch, okay. This is timing up, but because this one second uh, pulse delay, uh, as soon as it times out, it comes back on, the employees have to come back and turn on the latch again. So we've now got our application pretty much running. Um, the only other thing we need to do is download it. We go up to our download section, 
it opens up a comm channel. I've already got the relay hooked up. And we can now hit the download. It downloads the program. It's installed and running. That completes the whole application. Very simple timer. Uh, there's much more elaborate ways we could do this. Uh, one thing we could look at is a scheduler block. We put one of those down and take a look. We see that we can actually go in and set up based on year, month, day, fixed cyclically or weekly. Um, each one of these times can be set. If we take a look at saying adding a time, we can tell it uh, whether we want to turn on, turn off. We can have these scheduled based on time and date, and we can have up to 64 times uh, on each one of our sequencer blocks. And of course, we can have up to 320 sequencers in one PLC. Not that we probably need it, but that shows some of the advanced timing capabilities. In the meantime, this solved the immediate problem. Thank you very much, and if you have any other questions, please contact us and check the web um, as far as other applications. Thank you.